Hey coaches, I'm Danny Nicola. Happy to have you back here at Coach Dino Football. Today we're going to be talking by the numbers and how coaches can use sports science to help their team succeed. So I'll be sitting down with other coaches and we'll cover how they leverage metrics, how it impacts their strategy, and then some tips and tricks for integrating sports tech into your program. Before we get started, if you're interested in more content like this, just hit that subscribe button. It really helps us grow the channel and it helps you keep up to date with the latest content that we're producing. Now onto the video. Today, we're joined by Director of Strength and Conditioning at Grayson High School down in Georgia, Nate Mathis. Nate, happy to have you on the show. Glad to be here. I appreciate you guys having us on and I appreciate all you've done for our players, our program. So Nate, if you don't mind, could you just introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your journey within strength and conditioning and a little bit about your role now. So my name is Nate Mathis. I'm the strength and conditioning coach at Grayson High School in Loganville, Georgia, and uh, really got started at LaGrange College. Um, got hurt my last year playing, broke my hip. It was a blessing in disguise. Uh, you know, I knew I wanted to coach, didn't really know what that looked like. Um, you know, strength conditioning was really, uh, really just getting started out. Um, you know, at a high school level, we were just seeing, you know, whoever the whoever the young island staff was, or whoever the coordinator that had a PE job, they would come in and run through a workout, but uh, college was the first time, you know, really got in there and was exposed to a strength conditioning coach. And uh, once I, you know, kind of went to him after I got hurt and talked to him about what I wanted to do. And, you know, he took me under his wing, got me started, helped me out, uh, let me help him. And, you know, uh, I really owe a lot to him. He taught me a lot. And from there, you know, was fortunate enough to get hooked up with a guy that was volunteering with us. And his cousin played at LSU with uh, Tommy Moffat was down at LSU. And, Got to go down with him, spend some time with uh, Coach Moth and his staff. And um, that was where he kind of got me um, pointed in the right direction as far as like where to go from there. Uh, you know, because like I said, it was, everything was football coaching up until that point. So uh, for me and, you know, I got to see his staff work, um, actually seeing a strength conditioning staff, a, a group of five guys in there. And that was when, you know, I guess about day two of being down there, I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. And, you know, he told me, say, hey, start sending some emails out, you know, reach out to some guys, you know, uh, so went back, emailed a bunch of people, got a few responses, uh, went around, met some people, visited, and uh, was fortunate enough to land the old Miss position and uh, got to go out there. Uh, awesome time. Learned a lot from those guys. Uh, still still pick their brains, still talk to them. And, um, you know, went back to LaGrange after that uh, as an assistant, worked in their weight room. And then my wife and I got married. We uh, went the high school route. And uh, was in Georgia for a year, Florida for a year, and then spent the previous uh, four and a half years before coming here in 2021 at uh, Walker Valley High School just outside of Chattanooga. So I've uh, been a bunch of different places, uh, seen a bunch of different things, kind of seen the spe spectrum, uh, small high school football, uh, big high school football, you know, small college ball, big college ball. Um, so it's it's been great. It's been great to see all the different types of programs that, uh, you know, people, teams have to run, you know, depending on facilities, the players, you know, whatever. So uh, it, it's, it's been good. So Nate, obviously going from, you know, being a big time SEC coach, working with uh, all recruited athletes who are all at the top of their game. What are some of the most prominent lessons that you learned working with a program like Ole Miss? And what have you brought to your current program uh, and the high school space in general? You know, I think the biggest thing that I took away at Ole Miss, going around and visiting places, you heard a lot of, this is what we do, um, this is the only way to do it, uh, this is what works, and, you know, as a young coach, you're trying to figure out, okay, well, well which one am I going with? Because everybody's telling me this is what they do and this is what works. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. You didn't, you were kind of lost in, in the shuffle of it. So getting to Ole Miss, uh, those guys did a great job of, when we asked them a question, they hit us with another question and said, hey, go research this. You go check it out for yourself. You find what you believe in. You find what works for you, what works for your athletes, all that. And they were very open-minded and, and taught me to do the same thing. Told me, hey, it's okay. Try something out. If it messes up, it messes up. Go back to the drawing board and fix it. So that was something I took away from them. Um, and really getting to see for the first time how a strength conditioning staff worked. And, you know, there they hired guys that, you know, had different areas of interest. So you had a guy that uh, – you know, would be in nutrition, would be in corrective exercise. Uh, you know, you may have a guy that's you know, really good, proficient at teaching the Olympic movements. And then we were just getting into sports technology. I think we had 14 Zephyr units um, that, you know, they were starting to implement. So we had a guy that we kind of, you know, headed that up. So getting to see all the different areas um, that, that those guys were into and, you know, take a little bit from each one 
and kind of put it into what you do was uh, super valuable. And, uh, you know, also watching Coach Jackson, uh, Coach Paul Jackson, that's at, at Utah State now, uh, one of the smartest guys I've ever been around, and, and watching him take what he knew and explain it and uh, implement it with the players and being able to teach them and without talking over their head, without losing, you know, losing their interest and uh, what was what's awesome that I know one example I remember going out and watching him lead a, a youth camp warm up and him being able to relay what he knew and get those you know eight nine ten year old kids out there to go through a warm up and then to have an understanding of it was like you know really like, wow you know he's able one of the smartest guys that I've ever been around is able to go out there and talk to them and I thought that was really powerful because you know that's something that we have to do every day because at the end of the day we we probably care a lot more about this stuff than our players do. They care about the sport that they're playing. So being able to educate them, but also not talk over their heads and lose them was you know, a, a really powerful learning learning lesson that I picked up from there. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you face as a coach? You know, what we face at this level is, you know, buy-in for sports coaches. You know, we have to be able to kind of prove our value. Um, a, a lot of high schools are just now getting strength coaches and, you know, they look at it as, as you know, I'm not going to, spend a supplement on a guy that's just strength conditioning on go out and hire another you know, position coach or something like that. So really being able to prove your value and, um, you know, get by and get by in with the players, get by into what you're doing, because at the end of the day, especially, you know, in an area like we're in where, you know, a lot of people have, a lot of the kids have trainers and all the different people in their ear, you know, being able to create that buy-in to say, Hey, this is what we're going to do. This is why we're doing it. Um, and, and show results so that they, you know, so that it works. Um, Another challenge is, you know, each place that you go to, the team is different. Uh, what the team needs is different, um, you know, and it even goes to your facilities and your resources. Everyone's facilities and resources are different. So being able to make your program um, kind of fit those, uh, you know, you, you may go to a place. I've been to places before. You have barbells, free weights, and dumbbells. Uh, as far as, like, your on-the-field stuff, there's no sleds. There's no nothing like that. So you have cones. So being able to be flexible, be creative, and, uh, you know, make your program fit your resources and your kids. Um, you know, those are all challenges that, that you're going to face. They'll be different at each place. And also, you know, prior to the sports technology, uh, being able to look at your players throughout the season, throughout the year, and, you know, just really use your coach's eye to say, okay, we're fatigued right now. We need to back off or we're not. Um, you know, we can keep going. You know, we used to you know, have to walk into the room, you know, kind of before warm-ups. I would always come in a couple minutes early and watch the guys. You know, are they talking? Are they moving around? Are they interacting with each other? If not, we'll, you know, our central nervous system may be fatigued, so we need to back off of them a little bit right now. Um, you know, fortunately now we have some resources that uh, you know, we can kind of take the guesswork out. But yeah, those are all those are all challenges that you know we kind of see you on a daily basis. Um, you know, or at least from job to job, place to place. Obviously, there's a need to be a problem solver as a coach. Um, how has measuring player performance helped you address some of the problems that you mentioned? I mean, like you said, it, it takes the guesswork out. Um, you know, we're not necessarily, you know, we still go in and, you know, use your coach's eye, you know, watch the guys because at the end of the day, we only have 10 units. We don't have, I don't have a unit on every player. Um, but at the same time, like I said, it takes the guesswork out. We know where the players are. We know when to back off of them. We know where we can keep going. We know where we want them to be. Um, each practice, each, you know, training session, uh, you know, based off of our, what, what the what the demands of the game are, you know, getting into the season, we've got a pretty good idea where our players need to be or are going to be in a game. And, and you know, we know what our practices need to look like, um, you know, in order to prepare them for it. Nate, you're obviously the strength coach, um, but you're also the running backs coach. Um, is there anything unique uh, just for the running back position that you're accounting for through this wearable technology? You know, I think uh, of two of the running backs, we, we've got a pretty deep running back room. There's three guys, you know, we and they're kind of spread out with their classes. We've got a, 24, a, a 25, a 24, and a 23. Um, and we've got a GP, we've got the catapult units on two of them. So, you know, being able to monitor those uh, has been good, especially for the older guys, uh, you know, watching their loads, watching the kits that they're taking. Uh, you know, we make sure that, okay, our, our total volume, our player loads aren't getting too high based off of our game data, you know, we're not taking too many hits and we kind of compare that to what we're seeing with the guys, you know, if they come in and say, coach, you know, this is hurting, this is sore, uh, you know, my hamstring is really tight, my, you know, whatever it may be, um, you know, we kind of use the catapults to confirm that. Uh, and then you know, we can adjust from there with having a deeper room. We're able to, you know, get some of the older guys out, maybe, you know, hey, during a, you know, one-on-one -on -one inside period, okay, we're not going to run the you know, starter in there. We're going to get him out, and we're going to put some of the younger guys in, let them get some reps, take a little bit of load off of them.
you know, coach, obviously the running back position is one of the most demanding ones in the field um, from a dynamic standpoint, you know, having to do a lot of things, you know, catch the ball out of the backfield, run the ball a variety of different ways. Um, how would you say you account for that level of variety, that level of play after play uh, variance, you know, within your running backs group? And how does the GPS kind of help you monitor that? Really, it goes back to our off-season training and uh, how we train these guys. Uh, you know, I'm of the belief that we need to be exposed to high-speed sprinting, um, you know, throughout the year, microdoses of it uh, all year. That just keeps the tissues prepped um, for that type of intensity. Um, you know, it, it really goes to our off-season training. It, we, we expose them to a ton of different things. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have our times where we're more linear speed, uh, you know, change of direction speed, a lot of acceleration, acceleration decelerations. Um, and then, you know, really conditioning is, you know, broken down into different things, you know, linear conditioning, repeat sprintability, or um, our change of direction conditioning. And really, uh, the closer we get to season, those two will start mimicking each other a little more. Um, you know, they could be, we've, we've done it before. I've had you know, a lot of staff members when go out there and do position specific conditioning. And, um, you know, so they're actually running through some of the routes that they're doing. They run through, uh, you know, some of the run plays, their cuts, and different things. Um, but yeah, so like with our training, uh, really just exposing them to those movements, exposing them to the different things that they're going to do at high speeds. And then um, as, as far as the, uh, the catapults are concerned, um, you know, really just monitoring the same way we monitor the receivers. Um, you know, what's our, what's the load look like? What's their player loads look like? What's their uh, total volume look like? Um, you know, how many uh, contacts are they getting? And just making sure that we're not taxing these guys uh, more than we should as we get close to the game. You mentioned contact. Uh, running backs definitely get hit a lot more than you know most people on the field. How are you designing your training regimen to keep your guys healthy? Yeah, so if you really look at our training program, well, first of all, I'll start to say, uh, you know, one of the challenges of uh, being here is we have a very large roster. Um, you know, our administration does a great job of getting all of our football players in a third or fourth period. We bring our, um, you know, our JV freshmen. Um, new guys to the program in during third period, but our fourth period, it's longer because it's our, it's our lunch period. And uh, we get all of our guys in there, but at the same time, you're talking running 80, 85 guys through a training, uh, training session. So uh, the, the room's set up, uh, double half racks, there's 10 of them, so 20 workstations. So really, I mean, you're looking at, you know, four guys per rack until, you know, you get the backside and maybe even more. So if you look at the the, uh, the training template that we uh, look at any of the programming, it looks like there's a ton going on. Like, Coach, how, how are y'all doing all this? This is too much. But really what it is, you know, anyone who's worked with high school kids know you got to keep them busy. If you don't keep them busy, they're going to get disinterested and you have to be here to dealing with all their kind of problems. So at each rack, you know, really there's one uh, you know, core lift, a main thing that we're trying to accomplish. One guy's spotting. If the lift doesn't require a spot, then he's just resting. Um, and then the other two spots, that's where we work in some of our mobility uh, mobility work we'll do uh, you know, prehab exercises um, you have this upper body to, uh, focus day then you know we're working on maybe some ytws man four parts you know some different stuff uh, to help out with you know upper body wise uh, shoulders and um, you know with the lower body you know we may do some tke cycle squats spanish squats box pistols uh, you know some different things there but we try to work in uh, prehab stuff throughout the day, mobility work throughout the day um, to keep these guys healthy. And I don't know that we can ever prevent injuries. Uh, I, don't, I don't like using the word prevent. I think we can just mitigate and, you know, lessen, lessen the likelihood of, of that actually happening. So um, I think, you know, hopefully what we're doing, is doing a decent job of it. And, you know, then adding the catapults into this has, has given us a better idea of where the guys are. And, you know, if there is an issue, we can talk to the training staff and, um, you know, head it off. Yeah, just speaking from my own experience, you know, when you're a position coach, you know, obviously I'm an offensive line coach, as I mentioned, you form a really important connection with the group of guys that's assigned to you. Um, I'm interested to hear, how are you using this data to help get your guys recognition for their achievements during the season and to see where they're at or if they're ready for the next level? How do you sort of create that opportunity for your players based on the data that you're collecting? Yeah, so um, really just from a, from a simple standpoint, like the, our players love to see their, their top speeds. They want to see top speeds, they want to see power plays. Um, so, you know, after each game, you know, we've got, a, we've got a guy on staff. He does a great job of graphics. Um, I'll send him the names of, you know, top five performers or, uh, you know, whatever we decide to do. We'll get those up. He'll do a graphic for them. He'll put it on there, put their names on there, uh, put the, you know, metric, look how we do top speed. And uh, we'll get that sent out uh, 
put it out on Twitter, put it out on social media. The guys love it, um, you know, and college coaches check it out, you know, and, and it really goes into recruiting too. Uh, you know, we've had multiple coaches come in here, multiple college coaches come in here and sit down and, and look at the data. You know, obviously they have a lot of this stuff there. They're familiar with it. So um, they're able to check it out, take guesswork out, takes, uh, you know, looking and saying, how does the guy move? You know, we're not giving them about 10,000, 40 times and that type of stuff anymore. It's saying, hey, here's what a practice looks like. Here's what a game looks like. Um, you know, and, and like I said, it takes the guesswork out. Uh, it allows them to see, you know, what this guy's capable of doing on the field. Um, and then, our, you know, our guys too, you know, fortunately being very close to the University of Georgia, um, having some connections over there, uh, being able to go sit down with their guys who operate their catapults and kind of talk about, you know, what they see and, um, you know, pick their brains a little bit. You know, we're able to get some, Give some data and uh, kind of kind of compare it to our guys and show the guys, hey, this is where the guys are, are where, where they're at at the level that you're wanting to go to. Uh, here's where you are. Here's where you need to go and kind of you know, compare those. Awesome. So if you can just kind of explain to me the technical aspect of all of it, you know, actually getting your guys into routine of using the tech, wearing it. What does that look like for you guys? So it actually wasn't too bad. They were pretty excited about it, you know, especially a lot of our guys that were wearing it, you know, they're uh, – their college college prospects, so they they see the guys are wearing them and they're going on visits, so they were pretty excited about it. Um, you know, I think the challenge was when we get out of school, we're we're going, um, so making sure that we're organizing that and the pass out of it. Uh, we don't have a lot of time in between the bell ringing and the last period, and uh, players get down here getting taped, going to see the trainers, whatever they need to do, getting their stuff on, get out of the practice field. So. Um, you know, really, it wasn't too bad, but just getting them in the routine. It's really more more prep on my end, making sure that the units are ready to go, everything's charged up, uh, you know, everything's washed, everything's laid out, um, ready to roll so that the guys can just walk in, they find their size, they find which one they want to wear, they put it on, come by me, get their unit, I turn it on, and then they roll. Um, you know, we uh, fortunately, we got them in June, so that we was able to kind of take them through the summer and kind of get the guys in the routine, you know, as we was going through uh, the different things we do in the summer, seven on sevens or whatever, uh, they were able to kind of practice doing that. So that once we get the season, we've uh, got a pretty good system. You know, a question that I get a lot from coaches is just what are our expectations? Like what would you expect to be a good game value for X metric? So you mentioned providing data for your players. How are you personally defining and measuring success for them? And how do you approach setting those game values? So, like I said, we got these in June. Uh, really, uh, you know, I, had, I hadn't worked with the Catapult before. We, like, back in 2014, I was at Ole Miss. We uh, got to play around with the Zephyrs a little bit. But uh, really a learning process for me. And uh, I guess fortunately, when we got them in June, it really gave us the summer to you know, figure out how to use them. Uh, I got to dive into the dashboard and kind of, you know, check out different things, you know, talk to people. You guys have been awesome at Catapult, um, you know, helping out the questions, uh, very timely responses, and uh, – you know, it, it's been a great learning experience. Um, as far as uh, setting game values, uh, we had to really wait till the season got here. Uh, I, I knew what, you know, I talked to some guys at the college level, and they kind of told me what they had seen. Uh, you know, I talked to some guys at the high school level that didn't use it. But uh, for us, it was really getting into the season and tracking a few games. And, and even at the first of the season, uh, we had some games where our starters only played a half or three quarters. So, you know, knew that, okay, well, this is not really going to match up to, you know, we'll get into region play or, you know, get in some of our tougher opponents where the guys are going to have to play four quarters. So it, it took us a, it took us a few games of, of tracking it, playing around with it. And, um, you know, like I said, getting an idea of like, what, what does a full four quarter game look like? So once we got into region play, um, you know, felt pretty good about where it was, uh, you know, where their, where their values were. So, uh, you know, setting those and then just kind of basing the practices based off of what those are, you know, what, what is what is a Friday night game going to look like in region play where the guys are playing four quarters? Uh, we, we imagine this program matchup a lot like the playoffs. So this is what our practices need to work like. These are the, you know, the values we need to be getting throughout the week in order to make sure that they get to the game, they're ready to go, they're not taxed, but they're, you know, also prepared to, you know, play at a high level too. So I know we've talked about how this affects the players a little bit, but could you speak at all to what it's done to their preparation or, you know, their ability to perform better in games? Yeah, so I think uh, as far as our preparation is concerned, it's almost, uh, you know, we joke around about it, uh, takes away any place to hide. You know, we can look at it, you know, if you're messing around in practice and you're not getting after it, you know, we can see it. Um, so I think that, uh, and then they're competitive. They know, uh, they're looking at their, you know, power plays. They're looking at their top speeds. They're looking at their sprint yardage. They're comparing them with each other. Like I said, they're competitive. So they, they want to go out there every day and, um, you know, have good numbers. 
So uh, I think that it's uh, it's really increased uh, effort and intensity in some positions at practice. Um, you know, like I said, just in really just putting in that competitiveness and, um, you know, obviously that carries over your game anytime that you're, you know, practicing at high levels, practicing at high intensities, it's going to mimic the game, um, what we see in a game even more. If you could just a little bit talk a little bit more about what this has offered to your ability to help players in their recruiting. Um, just it'd be great to hear a little bit more about that as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, it really just started out as posting stuff, getting stuff out on social media uh, for our guys saying like, you know, here's the top speeds, here's, you know, this or that. And uh, then it moved into, we started having some coaches come in and, and asking those questions, you know, how does a guy move? You know, what does he do in a game, this, that, and the other. And, um, our, our guy that handles a lot of our college recruiting would start sending those coaches back and then we would sit down at the computer and we'd start pulling it up. I'll say, hey, here's a practice. Here's what he looks like throughout the week. Here's what a game looks like. We would look at multiple games, multiple weeks of practice. And, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of these coaches, you know, they have these. They're, their strength coaches are communicating uh, with them. Uh, the position coaches, the coordinators, they're communicating the data with them. So they're, they're pretty familiar with this. So um, it's just really good to sit down with uh, position coaches, sport coaches um, at these – at these colleges that um, and being able to talk talk data with them, talk about what we're looking at, and them understand it, and um, you know being able to really evaluate a player. And like I said, take guesswork out. You know, we're not looking at forties and five ten fives and L drills. We're looking at actual in game in practice data about you know how these kids are able to move and, and and what their production is. And coach, what role did you have specifically in getting this tech to your school? You know, catapult was always something that I looked at as it would be really neat. I saw some high schools were starting to get them, but uh, I kind of looked at it as something that we would not be able to get uh, just financially. And I didn't know, you know, nowhere, you know, there wasn't anywhere I'd been that I think that we could have purchased them. So uh, it was a dream, but, you know, not really something that was, that I thought was a reality. Uh, we had a coach go speak at uh, the Glacier Clinic in Atlanta, and he came back one day in the off season and said he had gotten an email. I guess it was a promotion you guys were running. Um, to giving us 10 units uh, to try out, test out for the year, and asked if I would be interested. And, uh, I really thought he was messing with me there for a little bit, and uh, I was like, absolutely, would be interested. So, you know, he got in touch. We ended up having a Zoom meeting um, and, uh, you know, got the units. So that's kind of how it all happened. Uh, you know, just kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, very blessed to have the opportunity. Like I said, didn't think that this would uh, be available. I guess what would you say uh, to any coach that might be on the fence about bringing this type of tech to their program? I would say if, if there's a tool out there that you can that is available that we can use to increase performance, then why would you not use it? You know, our, our jobs are to make sure that our kids are prepared, um, you know, prepared for games, that they're put in situations to be successful. So if there's something out there that we could use uh, to better prepare them, uh, to, you know, to help them in the recruiting process, that, that would just help them be successful and reach their goals and reach team goals, then, you know, why would we not use it? Why would we not? Um, you know, try it out and, and see see how it can help us. Coach, do you have any advice for a first time or potential user of Catapult? Yeah, I would say just dive in. Um, you know, I know when I first got it, it was a little intimidating because you feel like you need to be an expert at it, and uh, you're looking at all this stuff that you don't quite understand or you don't know how to take all the data that you're getting and you know make it useful data to give to the coaches. You know, I feel like you know we need to understand it first and understand how to communicate it so that we're giving actual useful stuff to the position coaches, to the coordinators, and the head coach. Um, so, yeah, I would just say dive into it, uh, play around with it, um, test it out. And, uh, you know, the big thing is to reach out, reach out to coaches. There's a lot of coaches that, that have these, you know, college level now at the high school level that you can reach out, talk to, bounce ideas, see what works for them and, uh, you know, develop relationships there. And uh, like I said, it's a, it's a great learning experience. So just just get started. So that's it for today. As always, if you have any questions you'd like me to cover, please feel free to leave a comment, DM me. I'm at Coach Dino FB on Twitter and Instagram. I look forward to talking with you guys all season long. Thanks again.